Welcome to this video about quasars. Now you've probably heard about quasars before and thought they sound quite exciting. Well, they kind of are. And in this video, I'm going to introduce what quasars are and what powers them as well. So the definition of a quasar is that they are a active galactic nuclei. They are a the extremely luminous central region of a galaxy. So they're not the actual galaxy themselves, they are the central region of that galaxy. Um, and lots of different types of galaxies can actually host them. But here you've got an image taken by the Hubble Space Telescope, and it zooms in kind of on this gas and dust disk centre. And on the left hand side, you've actually got the radio jets emanating away from the centre. And you can see that actually those jets are significantly bigger than the actual galaxy itself. So, what causes them? How are they powered? Well, in the centre of most galaxies, we have supermassive black holes, which is perfectly fine. They sit there all the time. We have one in the centre of our Milky Way. Um, ours isn't active like these, um, which is a good thing. And they are actively kind of feeding or they've got matter falling onto them. And that then basically drives what we see. So there are these supermassive black holes in the centre. You have this hot accretion disk orbiting around it. So there's matter basically orbiting the black hole and falling onto it. And then you also have these very high energy jets that are emitted perpendicular to the disk. So these are these really high energy jets we saw with that Hubble telescope image and they're perpendicular to the disk and that is where most of the energy we see is from these quasars. So these jets can actually extend over hundreds of thousands of light years away from the actual source or the black hole in the center and the zoomed in section I have there is the actual galaxy itself in this particular scenario here and then the bits on either side are those high energy jets emitted and you can see the size difference. The jets are significantly larger than the actual galaxy. They are also a lot brighter. Now, they're in different wavelengths. So the jets are likely imaged in the radio part of the spectrum, whereas the um, galaxy is likely in the optical. Now, you wouldn't see the jets in the optical part of the spectrum, but the total energy emitted by them will be significantly more than the actual central galaxy or the main galaxy itself and you've got another image here so you've got the, the galaxy kind of edge on there and then you've got these jets coming out perpendicular to that which is fairly characteristic as well now quasars because they're not the galaxy itself they are actually they're part of a galaxy they can reside in a variety of different galaxies so they can actually be in the central parts of elliptical galaxies. They can be in spiral galaxies. It doesn't really matter what sort of galaxy it is. A quasar can be hosted by you know, quite a range of different galaxies. But it does change what we see. And it changes kind of the, the dynamics and the behaviour depending on what galaxy they actually reside in. So if we go back to the Hubble classification or the, the tuning fork of galaxies, on the right hand side you have your spiral galaxies, so barred spirals on the bottom, normal spirals on the top. They evolve from right to left, so their spiral arms get tighter as they age, they get redder because the stars age, there's less new stars forming and they deplete their gas. And that's true for both types of spirals there. That happens as they kind of evolve in, on there. Elliptical galaxies are classified purely by shape, not by their evolutionary phase. And the differences here is that ellipticals don't have any gas in them, spirals do. Ellipticals have redder stars, they're older, they don't have any net rotation, things like that. And obviously they don't have spiral arms. So, your spiral galaxies, you've got your star formation and your spiral arms, mostly. They have a high gas content. Obviously, that gets depleted as they age. You've got populations of young blue stars, so they appear bluer than an elliptical or an older spiral galaxy. And they have a net rotation, so the, the disk part of the galaxy is essentially rotating um, in a disk-like structure. Your elliptical galaxies are kind of the opposite. So these don't have any star formation or spiral arms. They're kind of featureless. There's no gas in there, which is why we don't have any star formation. There's no net rotation to the galaxy, 
It's not rotating like a disc. They're more spherical shaped. And because of that, they have populations of old red stars. So this is kind of important, actually, for when we look at the quasar part of the actual galaxy, if they have a quasar. So quasars that are hosted in spiral galaxies are typically radio quiet. So that means they are not emitting a significant part of their, or a significant part of their total energy is not in the radio part of the spectrum. So they have fairly weak radio jets. So if we were to look at one of these, we wouldn't see those significant jets coming out. So they would be fairly radio quiet, but they would still have a bright central region, very luminous central region from the accretion disk, but they just wouldn't have big jets. And that's for your spiral galaxies. Elliptical galaxies generally host radio loud quasars, which means that they have very large, significant jets coming out, which is a, a significant fraction of their total luminosity. And the reason for that is that they might have undergone recent mergers, whereas a spiral galaxy has not. So these jets are thought to be powered by rotating black holes. So right at the centre, these supermassive black holes, they have some rotation to them. And it's that rotation that is thought to power these powerful jets. Now, this is where the difference comes between the spirals and the ellipticals. The spiral galaxies are likely to have slower spinning black holes. They are spun up by the accretion disk. So as that disk and that material falls to the black hole, it will spin it up. But it's not able to spin it up significantly to power the most powerful jets. So these are likely to have slower spinning black holes and therefore less powerful jets. Elliptical galaxies. If we look at how they actually form, they likely form from major mergers, which is when you have, well, for example, got lots of two spiral galaxies here. If they actually collide, they grow into a bigger galaxy, and in time you get these larger elliptical galaxies, and it depletes the gas. They have no net rotation, you lose the structure. But basically, if we're assuming that spiral galaxies have a supermassive black hole at the centre, there's two black holes there that then need to become one. In, this, in the elliptical galaxy. So as those two galaxies collide, so will the black holes. And when those two black holes collide and create one, it increases their rotational energy. So you get a significant increase in their rotational energy, which then in turn powers more powerful jets for these quasars. So that's the main differences between the two, why one of them is likely to have a radio loud quasar and one is a radio quiet quasar. But it's also worth noting that you may have heard of blazars, and if you haven't, blazars are basically the same as a quasar, but they are orientated that those powerful jets are pointed directly towards Earth. So when we look at them, they appear more energetic than a quasar because we're getting a direct line of sight to the, to the jet, whereas a quasar is kind of slightly angled a bit, so they're not directly pointed at Earth. But that is the main difference between blazars and quasars. They're essentially the same object. They're just orientated slightly different. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.